Beetlejuice, Jennifer's Body, Gremlins, Little Shop of Horrors, and my personal favorite contemporary masterpiece, Cocaine Bear. What do all of these movies have in common? You guessed it, monsters. Well, sorta. While all of these movies root their conflicts in semi-human, semi-creature monstrosities, they also share another key factor. Comedy. <laughs> Monster-themed horror comedies have the ability to take relevant cultural concepts, weave them into a tale of horror and death, while also making the visuals and narrative so absurd you just have to laugh. Hi, David! But what is it about this niche genre that continues to captivate audiences and stay relevant, while also staying funny? For this, we'll take John Landis's An American Werewolf in London as our example. This movie not only makes horror as a genre more accessible to the masses, but it also serves as an allegory for the cultural pressure to suppress self-identity. I'm a fucking werewolf, for Christ's sake! As you can guess from the title, An American Werewolf in London is pretty straightforward when it comes to plot. Two young American men, Jack and David, go backpacking in the English moors when they are attacked by a mysterious shadowy monster, I'm sure you'll never guess, which kills Jack and severely injures David. David is thus transformed into a werewolf and has to navigate this new aspect of his life alone in a foreign country while also being haunted by the ghost of his best friend trying to convince him to kill himself. Kill yourself. Gotta kill yourself. Suicide. No pressure. The narration of the movie switches between restricted and unrestricted, as we are both told the story of David's struggle from his point of view, while also being shown snippets of investigators trying to figure out what's going on. This allows us to sympathize and see ourselves in David, while also being privy to what is happening in the bigger picture. The movie itself is shot to go along with the narration. The shots vary between fast-moving point of view and long, still captures, both of which reflect the state of mind that the scene's character is in. For the most part, the movie does away with dramatic lighting and filters, going for a more realistic approach. Dramatic lighting only present when it would make sense within the diegesis, like when at a movie theater or out at night. This cinematography foregoes the dark, spooky tonality that other horror movies have, and focuses more on what is actually happening in the story. In addition, the colors present are realistic while also being a bit more vivid. This enhancement of raw colors gives a sense of heightened reality, which is further backed by the actor's heightened performance. These both worked in tandem to make the tone of the movie real enough to sympathize with, but absurd enough to still be funny. Excuse me. From a comedy perspective, this movie is filled with clever one-liners and excellent delivery by the actors. I find you very attractive and a little bit sad. Instead of dramatic monologues, much of the dialogue is dirty, crude, and overall believable. Queen Elizabeth is a man! Prince Charles is a faggot! Winston Churchill is bullshit! This is another factor that helps us connect with the characters while also laughing at the things they say. The gun will be good. Yes, you just put the gun to your forehead and pull the trigger. But if you put it in your mouth, you'd be sure not to miss. Thank you. You're all so thoughtful. Throughout the movie, there is also a fair amount of non-diegetic music all containing a moon or werewolf pun of some sort. As it is not present within the world of the story, it adds a clever, witty element to the narration. Above all, though, the thing that makes this movie really special is the mise-en-scene. I would be lying if I said that the entire story isn't hinged on the special effects makeup. All of the hideous elements that are often present in horror are so stark and unfiltered, it goes from being gruesome to a little bit funny. As far as special effects makeup and prosthetics goes, American Werewolf is most certainly the most notable in Hollywood history. But what about these visuals are so important? We've established that it adds a comedic element, but what does it mean for the story? Why is it so important that we see these monsters front and center? Well, it comes back to the age-old conflict of hidden identity and being different. David's new identity as a werewolf is dangerous and must be contained. It's the same cliche present in any given werewolf movie, but this can also be read as a metaphor for people's internal struggles with identity and the cultural need for them to hide who they are. This can be anything from queerness to religious beliefs, but one way or another, the society they are in does not allow their true self to be revealed. This societal pressure is not only represented by David being a literal werewolf, but him also already being an outsider in a foreign land. Whether you watch American Werewolf for the special effects, the clever script, or the broader message, this movie is sure to be a roller coaster of entertainment. Yes, love? 
a naked american man stole my balloon.